Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Alan Wake 2. It's been a while since we last touched this game. Alan Wake is the type of game I like to space out in between several days. I don't want to play too much of it all at once. And I had not noticed this before. Night Springs doesn't exist. It's a fictional town from the TV show I used to work on. It was any place USA, a place where we use as a backdrop for whatever strange story we had that week. One of the stories I wrote for the show involved a man, the champion of light, fighting his evil double, the herald of darkness. So it seems that Mr. Scratch was an idea from um, when he worked on that show. So this is basically this is basically their version of the Twilight Zone. We are playing this because uh, tomorrow I'm going to be starting Ape Escape and that's going to take over the next several days. So we are going to play some Alan Wake 2 and see how far we get. What were we doing last time? So we came from Caldera Street Station. Because there's a station, there's the exit to the street level. So I believe we have to go in this direction. This reminds me a little bit of a uh, Silent Hill 3 with it with its uh, subway section. With its subway slash sewer section. So obviously there have been a lot of subway sections in games going back um Siphon Filter, Silent Hill 3. I believe The Last of Us had had those uh, collapsed tunnel sections. What's your all-time favorite subway section in a game? What's the one subway section that you really couldn't get enough of? Um, like I said, um, one of my favorites is Silent Hill 3. The one in Siphon Filter was good. Um, it was decent. The problem is, um, once you got to the end, you had to fight Mara Aramov in that subway section, and that was a pain to deal with. Because what would happen is, um, once you got to Mara, she would kind of like section herself off in this little, like this little corner of the wall, making it almost impossible to shoot at her with, um, with a shotgun or a handgun. You literally had to, um, blast of her with an assault rifle. Because she was almost impossible to hit. Which kind of goes against the whole purpose of Logan wanting to keep her alive. Because, you know, you obviously don't want to spray her with bullets, but that's pretty much what you had to do. It was just almost impossible to hit her. Look at that, some words of power. How do we get over there? Do we go this way? The tunnels were a maze. The blood trail led me on. Those metal pieces are about one foot tall, Alan. You can easily climb over that. Come on, Alan. Oh, here we go. Words of aid. So you found some new words of power. We need that for sure. What are the words of power? Here we go. Words evade. Can you use them on another section or not? I guess you can only use them in the... Um, section they specify right torchbearer increases hand flare area of effect by 13% and duration by 1 seconds trauma pass we don't really need those right now um, painkillers 
I guess if we find some, um, I guess if we find some, um, flares, it'll increase how long they last. So that should uh, help the flares last a bit longer. If we can find some. I don't think we haven't found a single flare so far, right? So we only just have the flashlight. Oh, what's over here in this section? Oh, it's the end of the world, I guess. That's what's over here. The end of the... Of the world. You know, that's kind of like the barrier. The dark place won't let you go further past that. down here is it flooded can we go down here let's see how do we uh, shift the light again let's see Torios. it's the angel lamp yeah you gotta change the light charge break rooms Oh, look at this. Switch it. Switching between stories. It is possible to switch between the two stories of Saga and Alan whenever you reach a janitor's break room. You can distinguish these from regular break rooms by the presence of the janitor's bucket. When interacting with the puddle next to the bucket, you can switch to play as Alan in the Dark Place or Saga in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, okay. So you can change between the stories. I was wondering about that. But it has to be the janitor's break room. It can't be any just, just any regular break room. Because you have to have the puddle there to shift it. How do we shift the light again? Um, is it X? Oh shit, we don't have charges. Fuck. Well, there goes that idea. We cannot change it. The one we left, was that a... Was that a regular break room or was that a... Audi's break room? I did not check to see if it had the puddle or not. Let's see. Another place to use in this story. Oh, the collapsed tunnel. I needed to search the tunnels for further visions. Inspiration for the story that would lead me deeper. You found the new scene. Go to the plot board to re rewrite reality in the collapsed tunnel. The plot element I found would drive the story forward. Select the new scene and press X to start rewriting it. Oh, there we go. Right here. Collapsed tunnel, missing FBI agent. But first I want to check out the break room. I guess you can only sprint when you're uh, running from enemies because um, I'm pressing the button but nof nothing's happening right now. Yep, there's no janitor's cart right here, so we cannot switch to the story from this section. Oh, and those are, those are his uh, works from the previous game. That's one of his pages that you found. Yep, so let's go further into further into the deeper, I mean deeper into the tunnels of a uh, fake New York. Faux New York, I, I guess that's what you would call it. I think Resident Evil Outbreak had a subway section, didn't it? I think whether we're trying to get out through the subway tunnels. That was also funny how uh, Raccoon City started out as this Midwestern metropolis. 
and it just kept growing larger and larger like Silent Hill did in in its own series like you saw in um you saw in um Resident Evil 3 Nemesis the original that apparently Raccoon City had a subway even back then before the remix it's like why the hell does a midwestern city of that size need a subway I guess Umbrella sponsored it but um it made it seem at first like there wasn't um that big of a city that's why Umbrella controlled it complete, completely and then it just expanded and expanded and grew and grew and all of a sudden it was a metropolis so it's funny to hear like how there's only a hundred thousand people in the remakes according to Mikhail in what is obviously this huge section with subways and everything and apparently there's only a hundred thousand people there so those people must live comfortably regardless of um, the status of Jill's apartment and with that the dark place changed what is this your fault they'd love to be on his case the cold can get you anywhere with that black magic shit let the day shift handle it what happened, anyway? Some fed came looking for the cult, but it was a trap. A satanic blood sacrifice. Anyone who gets involved with the cult, they're next. I heard their leader is this famous writer, Alan Wake. Their unholy motherfucking messiah. Sounds like a load of bull. So that's obviously what um, Nightingale was pursuing. He was still insane and a drunk, but he was obviously pursuing that line the of trail investigation. Rubble. I had a feeling something was waiting there. So we got to get past the rubble somehow. I sound a bit on focus is because apparently there were um, there were a um, couple of recording issues at the start. I had to re kind of restart the video a couple times before I got it right. It happens, but it does tend to tr throw you off because you have stuff you plan to say or things you're going to point out, and then the recording goes wrong and you got to start all over again, even if it's just a couple minutes. So that's um, that always sucks. The joys of recording for YouTube, right? At least I don't stream live. Like that would that would be a nightmare. Empty locker. So we're good on gear or inventory. We got trauma pads, painkillers. Got a lot of revolver ammo. Look at that. We got 50, 54 whole bullets. So we're good on ammo. Oh, what's what's in here? Nothing. Zip. So I think we can sh shift the charge here, but we don't have a charge. Can we? Oh yeah, we did get a charge right here. So I wonder if we can go back. Another echo lingered here. A source of inspiration. But can we go back to the um to the other section? Yeah, it was it was before the collapse sound. You you see it right here, light shift inactive. Can we go back to that? That's what I want to find out. Oh look at that, where's the words of power right over there? Word of lamp power. So what does this one do? Words of lamp. Main attraction. Restores 50 health for each section when using flashlight boost. Provides 10% chance to stun enemies. 25% 25 25 chance to regain a flashlight charge killing an enemy. So this is this increases health. 
But we haven't even used that yet. Stun? I don't know, would that really be all that useful? Like I'd rather regain a charge when we kill an enemy. Yeah, let's do it this way. That way we can refill our our um flesh that we don't need to be relying so much on the freaking um batteries that we find. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can go back, at least until we investigate this. Your research can help me, ma'am. What do you know? There's more than one urban legend about the cult of the word. The murder cult used these tunnels for their ritual sacrifices. They say the cult reenacted the murders in Alan Wake's crime books. That Wake was even involved somehow, under a false identity. Mr. Scratch, which is, of course, a nickname for the devil himself. It was disturbing finding myself in the story this way. But I was desperate, and it felt right for the story. So it sounds like Mr. Scratch has been going around, um... Committing murders under Alan's name. Oh shit, there they are right there. We can't go in there. Here we go. See, maybe we can sneak by them. Taken cultist, taken wolf, hostile shadow, heavy shadow. Hostile shadows are ghostly figures lurking in the dark place. Hostile shadows hide amongst group of shadows. They do not react to visual stimuli, but if you make too much noise to get too close to them or shine the flashlight on them for too long, they will sense your presence and become highly aggressive. So basically, they don't see you. Like I said, they don't react to visual stimuli. But uh, So basically, as long as you stay away from them, as long as you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Oh, shit, they're... God damn, they're right there, motherfucker. God damn. See, like, I want to get back to the, this one here so we can shift it. Because there's two of them. This is the one we activated. Can we go back this way? It doesn't seem like it. Look, look like it's blocked by the rubble. So how will we even go back? Yeah, I don't think we can go back here because it's... um. Well, you have the arrow right here. But I don't know if we can get past them in this section or not. Can we just run past them? All right, here we go. Yeah, let's get past the collapsed tunnel. The federal agent had come here looking for answers. All he found was a fate worse than death. Let's go back to the section over here, which we couldn't activate earlier because we didn't have the charge yet. Let's see if we can do it now. I want to see what happens. All right, so we got the charge. The water was gone. The way forward was open. Okay, so we activated that. Is there anything else left we have to retrieve from that section? There is a break room. I don't think so, right? I think it's just that that's the only thing we needed. Because we're heading in the direction of the abandoned station. So I don't think we need to go back there to that section. I think we found everything there is to find over there, right? Let's go to the old plot board. Add a new element from here. I'd have to go to the scene. I was making my way deeper into the story.
This was where the agent's trail went cold, a ghost. So that's kind of cool. He's kind of creating the environment as he goes along. Night Springs new season coming soon. Cult of the Word. If only there were a new season of Twilight Zone coming soon. But of course they kind of gave up on that after um, season 2. They said it was cancelled. I understand why it didn't get great ratings this time. Switch that off for now. But it seems like they were making progress towards getting the show much closer to what Rod Serling would have wanted or what they would have wanted to do during the 80s Twilight Zone but I guess their time just ran out. Also the problem with Jordan Peele trying to do the Twilight Zone is um, Jordan Peele is a very busy man. People are saying oh it's too woke, it's too socially conscious of, as if that wasn't the whole point of the Twilight Zone. Was it worth the risk to go see who? No I don't think so man. I think we should stay away from that but yeah um, the thing is he's a very busy man I don't think people realize how busy Jordan Peele is with so many projects at the same time he was supposed to be producing the series but he was really more of an executive producer so basically he was uh, the money guy that's pretty much what the executive producer does and they make sure the production gets the funding it needs that's where you'll see like films and shows that say, oh, like James Cameron was a executive producer on this. And he, James Cameron wasn't even anywhere near to say he didn't do shit. He, he just got the money for the project and that was that. That's what happened to Terminator Dark Fate. People are saying, oh, the movie sucked. Why was, why was it so bad? Well, it was, it was bad because the guy who's supposed to be overseeing it, everything, James Cameron, isn't even on set. He's over there hundreds of miles away, away working on some other stuff for Avatar. He's not even there. And so that what ends up happening is that your so-called producer isn't overseeing the series he's supposed to produce. So he just loses control and he handed that over the reins to someone else. You know, in his case, it was Tim Miller. In um, Jordan Peele's case, it was, um, what's that guy's name from the X-Men comics? I mean, not comics, the X-Men movies. The guy who did the movies for Fox, Simon Kinberg. And Simon Kinberg's no freaking sci-fi genius. So what do you think he's going to do? They needed Peel to be on there actually working on the show. That was the reason why it worked originally because Rod was always there. He was the center point of the show. And then he had a steady stable of writers who, yes, they did go on and work them. Oh, look at this. Cynthia Weaver worked hard following her obsessive rituals. So this is all of Alan Wake's work from the previous um, game. Look at, all this, look at all this shit, that was a radio, a radio call. Yeah, so Simon Kimber is no genius, like he's competent, but he's not going to be a focal point for your, for your show. And then when, what they did in the original was, they had Rod was the center point. And he had his uh, steady stable of writers who, even though, yes, they were working in their own shows and books and projects and movies in their own spare time but they were always there and so what ended up happening was um you had a creative group that was always consistent they were always there on the show in one form or another but that's not the case for either of the reboots you know the 80s came closest to what the Twilight Zone was originally but even then it still had issues because of executive meddling and what happens when you're when there's no one in charge at the set, well, things just go haywire. That's what exactly what happened to the Jordan Peele show. Jordan, if he wanted to be serious about this, needed to take off like at least two or three years just to do the Twilight Zone, nothing else. No other movies, no other shows, no books, no no other media appearances. And, oh my, shit. Or stuff like that. Just focus squarely on Twilight Zone like Rod did and he just was not willing to do that. And on the one hand, you can't blame him because he's got a lot of opportunities right now. But at the same time, if you can't do the show properly, there's no point in reviving it. There's no point in reviving the show if you don't have the time and effort and dedication to do it properly because the show is going to fail. That was the same thing with the UPN show too, except the UPN was also dirt cheap. So that that's why it also didn't work. And you know it's going to be revived again. That's without question. It's going to be revived again.
But if they ever do actually do it again, you need someone to take charge and be the center point of the show. It can't just be all oh, a bunch of random writers from Hollywood and you have a guy who's occasionally a producer and he'll hand over the reins to, to the show most of the times. He'll hand it over to someone else. No, that's not going to work. You need someone to take Rod's place and commit themselves wholly to the Twilight Zone running. Motherfucker. Piece of shit. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Fuck you, jackass. Don't forget to use safe havens to hide from enemies and receive healing in combat. Yeah, that would work if we knew where a safe haven was. Painkiller's right there somehow. Are they on the floor? Where are they? Says there's painkillers, I don't see them. Are we grabbing dirty ass pills from the freaking floor? Okay, so it says we're staring straight at them. Where the fuck are those painkillers? Shit. Where are they? It literally says they're literally right. In oh, there, there it is. Shit, I can't see them. They're so low to the ground. Alan, can you grab the, grab the freaking medicine, fool? Why can't we grab them? Do we have to crouch down? Crouch in pre-designated locations. So how do we crouch then? You guys are trying to grab the painkillers, but it's not working. Why can we not pick up that freaking uh, painkiller? It's literally right there. Why? Why would you pick it up? We have the space for it. Look at that. We have tons of inventory space. Why is it not picking up the freaking painkillers? Think Google will know. Google knows everything. Let's see. Got dodge, perfect dodge. How do we crouch? Yeah, we need to crouch to get that get that painkiller there, but how do we do it? Is it the sprint button? Yeah, I don't get I don't get why he won't pick up the medicine is right there. Like do we have to shine the flashlight at it? Here we go, controls. Let's see, sprint, dodge, interact. That's X. That's exactly what we're pressing. Why is it not, um, why is he not picking up the, 
The painkiller is right there. We see it right there. Why can we not pick it up? Look at that, it almost showed up right there. It looks like it's glitched. I think it might be glitched a little. Let's see. Because it shows up momentarily, but it doesn't want to grab it. Yeah, why is it stuck in there? I'm guessing that might be where it's a good idea to up to update the game from time to time in case glitches like this happen and they don't slow you down. Cause it shows up it shows up temporarily. On the screen, he just doesn't want to pick it up. They had to put it on the bottom one too. They couldn't put them on the top locker. So we could actually see the damn thing. Yeah, you know what? Forget that one. We'll just... We'll use another one or... He mentioned a safe haven. I assume there's a safe haven through here. Maybe this has some medicine for us. Got a first aid kit. How about now? Let's see if now that he's not dying halfway on his feet, let's see if we can actually get that damn painkiller now. Nope. Still blocked. What the fuck? See, they gotta, it shows up right there. For for like a one split second it shows up. But we can't get it. No idea how to grab it. We're just gonna have to... Uh, is that just gonna have to leave it be I'm guessing that's a glitch forget it then I'm guessing that's a glitch probably something to do with the with the perspective or something let's switch that off just in case there's another one of shadow men right over here oh damn we did have a we didn't even have to use the freaking um Medicine, we had it right here. Fuck. Oh well. Damn, we didn't even need to use the freaking painkiller. There, there was a safe haven right there. That sucks. Use it for nothing. Let's store this in the shoebox. I, I get the feeling that'll come in handy for um boss later on. So you know what? Let's store that in the shoebox. I'm gonna store a battery as always. Gotta start building up our own little um, spare stuff right there. I think we should probably keep the handgun ammo. Maybe we can move one battery. There we go. Trauma pad. We have two painkillers stored already. I think that should be enough. Oh, look at that. Must be. 
I've been trying to shape the dark place around me, but so much fades away. Even my memory of the process washed away by dark waves. But some things remain. The darkest, nastiest elements, like the murder site. It's my goal, a stepping stone to travel deeper to escape. Write a narrative that takes me there. Casey will lead me to it. Damn, nothing in the lockers, huh? It's like that. Shit, is he stuck? What the hell? Oh, damn, he is stuck. Fuck. Get out of the way, boxes. You need help? Good luck. God damn, should we try one more time just to get that painkiller in case we need it? This sucks, it's right there and we can't grab it. Oh fuck that, you know what, no, screw it. Never mind. That thing is back. Fuck that. Never mind, we're getting the hell out of here. Screw that um, painkiller, they, they can stay there. The train blocked my way forward, but it was here for a reason. It had a role to play. Rewrite the derailed train scene to continue on the cult's trail. I had a new scene to use, a new setting. Missing FBI agent or murder cult? The cult used fire to claim dominion over the tunnels. So does it change depending on which one you use? This thread fit the scene. Like, can you get different branches of the storyline? following depending on what you use like maybe if you put the agent there instead you get something different it'll be a different result this is a very cool setup but i wonder exactly uh, how far they pushed it Colin, wake. fuck let's get the fuck out of here AWE, Altered World Event. I wonder how they came up with that in the in the setting. That had to be like an um, FPC agent that got caught up into the dark place, got absorbed there into it. Because only they would know about the AWE. Oh, unless because unless it's the one that he saw earlier, in the um, in the FPC station, the monitoring station, he saw it written there. Zinc Boulevard. What a name. The cult poured the gasoline over the train car. An iron cage that would soon become a coffin. So do we put the H in here or not? The scene changed with the story. Now you know what, let's stick with the murder call for now. I know they were calling for um, Alex Casey there. Or whoever it is. I eat the words. You are not. Nope. Ooh. Damn, that hurt. You are lost. 
I was using that now and reload. God damn. Damn. Nearly killed him just like that. Let's regain our health. Ah, uh, so it only regains a portion of your health. I thought maybe it would um, regain all of it. No, it only regains a portion of it. So that's another difference from the main game, um, from the first game to this one. You can only recover part of your health in the, um, in the safe havens or the break rooms. nothing here why is there nothing in there go on, go on, this is where the history of the cult gets genuinely disturbing the cultists track down the torchbearers living in the tunnels they lock the poor folks up in a derailed subway car doused it in gasoline yeah charming it turns into a bit of a ghost story after that they say the dark smoke from the fire still roams the tunnels searching for new victims to devour. There are no happy endings in this city. The story thread felt important. I could use it in one of the scenes I'd found. That's the lady from the diner, isn't it? The one who was trying to steal that thing? The subway car had become a burnt husk. I could get through it now. What about the door? The door, right? It is locked. So we can't go through there. We have to go through the subway tunnel. Or subway car, rather. The hell? Ugh. Don't tell me they're all gonna get back up. That would not be right. That would be freaky. They all got up. So what happens if you follow the other path, the one with the agent? Made it real, Alan. All those people, you made it real. At least we got to the exit. It 
Let's unlock this door. Just in case we need to make a quick exit. It's auto saving, but it's lurking behind this door. Oh, there's that famous line again it's not a lake, it's an ocean. Oh, shit. Turn that flashlight off, man. That's too many of them. Oh, shit, they're right there, too. Yeah, shut that thing off. So there's abandoned station. Um, is there anything we need to get from here, or can we just leave? Cause that's uh, that's an awful lot of dudes right there. Look at them; they're all surrounding it. But I have to make a run for it. Oh, we got some items here. We might have to make a run for it. Lit over here, like there's something in there, but I don't see anything. All employees must swipe. Swipe what? Yeah, whatever's in there is not worth it. That is not worth it. Let's just get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. We don't need to fight all those guys. My path was blocked. I had to find a way through. The lights would help me. Here's another break room. Let's put that health pack away. That one. Move it all the way over here. Because those could help us out a lot during the boss fights. I assume there's more boss fights coming. Should we do a separate manual save just to see what happens if we um decide to go back and use the FBI agent instead? Because it seems like there's two separate paths. So I wonder what might happen if we use the FBI agent instead of the cult. Oh yeah, let's store that. We can definitely store that one. So do all break rooms restore only that has more portion of your health or do the RT break rooms um restore more of your health. Seems like they will be more beneficial to you. You know, it seems like they will restore more health than regular break rooms. Make sure nobody's following us.
Oh shit. Motherfucker. This is a God damn. I think we're gonna have to eliminate them. Cause I don't think we can pass through unscathed. I think there's too many of them. So we're gonna have to eliminate some of them. Oh, we have to be behind it, that's why. I kept pressing it too close to the other location. You have to be right behind the wall to get it to function. Now I'm getting the hang of it. Right, we made it through. Let's go.
All right, so we got a word of gun. Got roulette, personal space, and sunny skies. Let's see. Roulette provides 5% five five chance not to consume ammo when firing the revolver. Personal space increases knockback of Allen's shotgun at 15%. We don't even have a shotgun right now. Increases flare guns, projectile area of effect by 25%. We don't have a flare gun I either, so... Uh, I guess we gotta go roulette by default, right? Because we don't have any of that stuff yet. We got no shotgun and no flare, so I guess we gotta go roulette by default. Because we don't have anything else. Why are we gonna put it on something we don't need? We don't even have a flare gun or a shotgun. At least the revolver one might be slightly useful compared to the other ones that are no they're not of any use right now. The echoing hall had a story to tell. I had found another compelling location to use. So which should we go? Missing FBI agent, torchbearers, murder cult. I guess the torchbearers? So that is a pretty cool aspect, the way you're building your own story almost. I wonder if there's different endings. Or do they all share the same similar ending at the end? Like is it just the destination? The destination is the same as the path that matters or can you build like a separate ending? Look at all the copies of his book. Alex Casey, The Sudden Stop. So I guess certain outcomes are more favorable than others, right? I'm guessing some of them may for like the better plot story. So you gotta figure out which one to use. The cultists were close now. A dark presence rising from the depths.
It doesn't look like we can um, go over to that side from here. Obviously, wants us to go into the lit hallway, but I mean the lit subway car. But how do we get there? We have to get over there somehow. But the door's closed. So how do we get inside? Maybe we have to follow Casey's instead. Um, yeah, all the, all the yellow arrows are pointing over there, but how do we get over there? How do we actually make it into the car that we're supposed to? We switched it for the FBI agent at the end. Because it, it almost sounds like um, it almost seems like I, with that floor being collapsed, you'd be able to just walk down there, but it doesn't seem like it's slightly. Maybe you gotta switch it for the FBI agent. Oh, never mind. I see the expiration right there. Never mind. I see it. Oh yeah, we have to examine the the sign. The Fed had witnessed something here that made him run scared. Whether the summoning ritual had been a bona fide supernatural event or the mass psychosis of stark raving lunatics, it didn't change the facts. The cult was messing with things no one should mess with. The ritual was a vital part of the story, the key to reaching the murder site. The new story beat fit the story perfectly. Yes, this is the ritual to lead you on. But it's what the story needs. Oh boy, what do we just do? I think you might have unleashed something here, Alan. Something big. That does not sound friendly. Oh damn, there's a lot of them now. Shit. Oh shit. Might have to fight our way through. Ooh. 
Damn. Just like that. Aim the head. I guess he that targeted the head. So we got the trophy. I think we need some health. Should we use the big one or let's see? I guess let's use the trauma pad just to see what it does. God damn. That's a lot of um dudes. We're rapidly losing uh ammo. It's just a lot of them. Let's uh, run for it before we run into any more trouble. Yeah, let's just get the hell out of here. Oh shit. They would be guarding the damn subway car, wouldn't they? On both sides. Shit. What do we do now? We don't have anything else either. All we have is just a, the flashlight. We don't have anything else at all. Can we just run past them? Oh, we're safe in the light. Thank God. Is that the door we need to get to? Let's see. No, I think it's just a room. Or is that the door we need to get to? I think we can make it before that guy grabs us. Where's this dude? Let's see. Okay, so it seals up the car. That also means we can't get out, so... 
not particularly useful there. Yeah, that doesn't really help us. We're just gonna run for it. I think we're just gonna run for it. He's right there. We can't waste too much more ammo trying to fight them because there's too many of them, but... Oh, we I just saw we got one right over there. Shit. You're gonna have to um, run for it. Think we can make it? Oh, shit, shit, he would be right in front of the fucking door, would he? God damn, they would be right there. Fuck it, I think we do just have to take the risk. Close that fucking door, man, close the door. Ooh. Shit! Not that he saw him, because they actually opened fucking doors. Quite a bit smarter than actual zombies. They actually can open doors. I wouldn't have thought so since they're just shadows. How can they open a door? But apparently they can. Got another word of power. This time we got a word of action. Let's see. Here we go. Turning tables decreases damage received by darkness projectiles by 25%. That would actually be useful and damage would be useful but i think we'll go for this one makes alan 20 percent harder for enemies to, to detect that means we can walk past them they won't see us i think that's actually the most um efficient use of our resources right now because that way we can actually save some ammo by walking past them damn look at all the freaking grenade for uh, mr S all the graffiti for mr scratch look at that that is some colorful graffiti right there I think if more gra more graffiti were actually like this instead of just random crap, they wouldn't. People wouldn't actually mind it in real life. I think people don't like it because it. A lot of the time, it usually has no style, and it's they put they place it in the most um, inappropriate areas. You know, instead of placing it in areas that are butt ugly and could use some art, they go and actually trash some decent buildings. I think if it were more stylish. You know, if it was actual art. They start just random scroll, random scrolling on the walls and doors and stuff. I think people will be more favorable towards graffiti. There's the Ocean View Hotel. I wanna, I wanna get to that part. I wanna see what's in there. Cause we know the Ocean View Motel is a doorway to um, in between worlds. But I wonder what the Ocean View Hotel is. Got more health. Nice. Still bugs me we couldn't get that earlier painkiller. He just would not pick it up no matter what angle we tried to see it from. Oh shit, never mind. Never mind. Sorry to disturb you. Fuck. Reload. Damn, that was a lot of wasted bullets. And for nothing, because there's nothing even heat inside here. Thought there were going to be bullets here or something. There ain't shit in there. We should have just uh, left it alone. The cultists weren't the only ones using the tunnels. 
Hidden graffiti signs marked secret routes. I kept hearing whispers around burn barrels of an underground society of mystic outsiders with hidden knowledge. <laughs> Typical New York. Hot wick. Yeah, there's no point in going in that room at all. Oh, we gotta go back all the way back? Oh, that sucks. That's bullshit. Come on. Here, bring it. Bring it, jackass. We're just gonna run right past them. Fuck those guys. They can't get in the light. He's right there, but fuck him. I wonder if there's supposed to be um, different stuff in there depending on which path you choose because some of them are downright empty. It seems odd that there wouldn't be uh, health items or bullets in there. It's just empty space. I wonder if there's supposed to be something in there depending on which path you choose. Yes, that seems kind of weird. There's nothing in there. I think we're just, instead of even going inside there, we're just gonna run to the upper platform. And screw those guys. Just run to the upper platform. God damn! Stupid jackass! Hidden graffiti signs marked secret routes. I kept hearing whispers around burn barrels of an underground society of mystic outsiders with hidden knowledge. At least we made it to the safe haven. It's a dirty safe haven, but still. We've got three first aid kits in there. Should we bother using the the uh, the main one?
just recover our health for the most part. There's another word of power. So this one's fixed. Let's see. Increases maximum health, increase max amount of health restore and safe havens. Max amount of health when a new word of power is discovered. Yeah, that one doesn't work because who knows how often I'm going to be finding them. Now this one seems uh, efficient. You know what, let's do the safe haven. We went to 30%, so let's um let's recover some health right now. Hell yeah, look at that. Now we got that nice heal. Because what good is having extra health if it doesn't recover when we go into these places? We gotta heal, right? So... Oh, look at me. He's still trying to get in there, motherfucker. Wow, we played for 7 hours 27 minutes before that. Now it's 8 hours and 4 minutes. This is going to be a long game, isn't it? It's going to be a very long game. Probably like 20 hours or so. Complete the ritual in the collapse tunnel. Okay, so we had to reach the collapse tunnel and perform some kind of ritual. Following a typical nightmare pattern, I was late, desperately trying to reach my destination. Yeah, we are lost, right? That sign is 100% accurate. Oh, we're back in the tunnels. But where in the tunnels? Okay, so we're over here. What's this? There's a question mark there, but what's in there? I guess we have to go over to this section. Oh, look at his stash. Hell yeah, finally got some flares after 8 hours of the game. Now oh, we can't take the tape too? We could have used the tape. So what ritual are we trying to do? Oh, there's a trauma pad. We didn't even get that. I'm guessing we can't leave the tunnels until we complete the ritual. Because that always was the point of going down here. Not gonna lie, I'm, I am kind of wanted to return to Saga's story because uh, we are getting lost in here. I had a new idea, a new story thread. All right.
Changing a plot element in a scene without being there was impossible. Summoning ritual. Here we go. I had to be at the scene to see and understand it in order to change it. There's the unblocked tunnel. Oh shit. Run, Alan. God damn, it's like a freaking room from a Silent Hill a short message where the papers just started crumbling. Safe room, Alan. Get the fuck out of there. Damn, I think it's wild. It's like that whole thing in control, the the astral what do you even call it? Not the astral glitch, whatever the thing was. The dark presence. It was gone. That astral thing that pursued you through all the different environments, is it's like that. Damn. Oh boy. That's not good. That's not good at all because I'm going to pass then if that thing is out there. Got a trophy storm cloud. Was always out there hunting me. I really wish I remember what those things were called in control. The astral things they would—you couldn't kill them. They would just uh, circle around the environment, and they would pursue you everywhere. I just don't remember. Oh, wait a second. Are we in the oldest house? Underneath it? That would be cool as hell. If we were, it looks like that. Nah, this is some someplace else. Maybe the Dark Places version of the oldest house. I had found the murder site. Somehow 
the victim's heart was the key. Oh, fucking, um... Let's not look. Fucking, um... Nightingale again. Shit. I took off the no-nudity filter so we could... You would have underwear on. Shit. Something had shifted. I felt an overwhelming closeness to home. An FBI agent? Who are you? What is this? Who are you? She can hear me. I'm Saga Anderson, FBI. This is Alan Wake. I'm trapped here. The dark place. Under Cauldron Lake. Not Cauldron Lake. Where are you? I'm trying to escape. I'm making progress, but I'm in danger. The dark presence. Help me. Please, help me. I could sense it. I was closer to home. Had the woman in the vision helped me somehow? Something had changed outside Parliament Tower, where I'd lived with Alice. It was out there, waiting for me. So it looks like we're heading to the tower next. I wonder if we're going to shift over to uh, Saga now. Nope, we're not going to get that copyrighted music. Alright, got a trophy, New York City. Oh, we're still, we're still Alan. This does look like the abandoned portion of the oldest house. Fuck off, Nightingale. Who was writing who? Who was writing this poem? Me? No. This is the ritual to lead you on. Your friends will meet him when you are gone. That sounds ominous. Sounds like, um... Is maybe Zane writing this? Partially? Yeah, this really does look like the part of the oldest house where, um... Where that, um... Former board member kind of fucked off to at the very end of the DLC. But I'm guessing we're still in the Cauldron Lake based on what he said. The murder site, I felt it. Stepping to the murder site, I'd felt it hanging in the air. A meaning. The violent emotion of the act. Like a cloud of wrath. The dead eyes of the victim staring at something you couldn't see. And yet, making you aware of it. Something that soaked into this place on a molecular level, overlapping with your meaningless existence. Regression to something you had managed to forget. Marking you. Taking you for a ride. Making you crazier. Really like the way he speaks. I'm gonna have to review those collected echoes later on in the writer's room. Shame about James McCaffrey, right? That sucks. He went out in his prime. Thanks to was a cancer. That blows. That fucking blows. I was just getting to like his characters too, especially uh, Trench. Now he's gone. Along with all the other goats. Kevin Conroy. Carl Weathers. They're all gone. Shit. Let's find another uh, safe haven we're gonna save. Let's see, where are we? Uh, where are we now? So we should be close to the street exit. Look at that shiny train. At least it's looking back to normal. You think if we step on the track, it's gonna run us over? Like in Silent Hill. The station had changed. I was closer now.
There's Mr. Door watching us with that side eye. You may not be the only you out there, so that's obviously the hint of Mr. Scratch. I wonder when he's when he's gonna show up. Oh look at that, the dark place. Opening soon, a photography and video, video videography exhibition by Alice Wake. There it is, that's our destination. That huge our tower right tower. over there. Our home in New York. Was I really this close to being home? Going up to our apartment? Would I be home? Or was Probably this just an not. echo of the real thing? Probably is just an echo. Even then the murder site had brought me one step closer to escape. We need a uh, safe haven desperately. There's a locked door right over there. There's, there's a break room over here. But I don't know if it's too much trouble to try to get to it. We have to go to the left, right? Yeah, let's see if we can get over there. If there's too many dudes, maybe we can just shift it. And eliminate them that way. There we go. Yeah, let's just shift it that way, get rid of them. Damn, we're way farther off from the from the safe haven than I thought. I thought it was gonna be right over there. He was supposed to go to the left. You know what? Let's just, let's just head to the tower. Whatever. Let's just head to the tower. Maybe there'll be a safe space, safe spot there. At the very least, a regular break room. Oh, look at that! Time loses meaning here. How long have I been trying to escape? In loving memory of Alan Wake, 1977 to 2010. An author and a husband. Dad, he was born the same day, the same year as Star Wars came out. That's a pretty cool birthday. That was when the new hope was first released. That, that is a pretty cool fact for the game's universe. Yeah, let's just get the, get our ass in here. Maybe we can find a safe spot in here. He was a victim. Maybe he was a victim. Writer. Maybe he was a victim. The cult using his words. Or Maybe he was the monster behind it all. Either way, Alice Wake, his ex, she knew things. It was there in her art for all to see. A cry for help. The darkness she'd witnessed. And that put her in danger. Was Alice here? In the story? I'm still curious what that guy's deal is. What is, um... Is he a creation or is he just some random guy that Alan kind of manipulated into becoming... Alex Casey. 
Because like I said, there's no way in hell that guy is just some regular random dude named Alex Casey. That's be that either he created him from scratch or else he manipulated someone else into becoming Alex Casey. There's no way that that was just some random guy who happens to share his name. Haunting, initiation three. Alice's photo equipment set to go off when the door opens. I think um, once we reach um, one of Ati's break rooms, we're gonna switch over to Saga for a while. Just for a bit. Alice! Alice! Scratch, are you in here? Gonna come and kick your ass? Alice. There this he is, is right there. Scratch. How did Alice get this? Is he stalking her? He's been coming and going, Alan. That's that's the photo she showed uh one of them she showed um the FBC. I'm guessing they never actually did anything, right? Because they got their own crisis going on. They never managed to follow up on this thing. Because technically, they're supposed to protect her. This is the door to my study, where I wrote my books. Oh, look at the spiral. This symbol wasn't here before. We recognize that from uh, the, the control DLC. From what they call it, AWE, or Altered World Event. That was the spiral door. Alice's video camera. No memory Locate card the memory inside. card. Video art, dock on screens, multi, focal point of the dark. Where is the uh, memory card? Oh, here it is. Part one. What was Alice working on? Let's see. Let's see what she was working on, Alan. That is not it. Um, here it is. Let's see what this is all about. Oh, the live action. When I was younger, photography was everything to me. I moved to New York thinking I'd make it as an artist. And then I met Alan. We had a good thing. We were both dedicated by our creative ambitions. The only difference was that Alan's work made money. He brought me work when he could. I took his promo shots, um, created covers for his books. I'm sure he forced his publisher into it. I was taking photos, just not my photos. That was a nice gesture on his part if he did that. And that nod at me. Things got complicated sometimes, but that's life, right? We loved each other. Then... Alan hit a block. I brought out a meaner side of him. One I didn't like. I set up a trip to see a doctor in Washington. I didn't tell him until we got there. We argued. Things went wrong. And he was just gone. Drowned, allegedly. Easy for people to think it was my fault. Hell, I do, too, sometimes. About six years ago, I started hearing noises in the night. Typewriter keys clacking. 
voices. Ellen was back, haunting me. Then it got violent. It was Alan. And yet, it was a monster. He always did have anger in him. I set up cameras around the apartment with motion sensors and flashes. Now, when the monster comes, I turn it into art. My nightmares caught on film. And this is the focus of my new exhibition. To show people the world is so much darker than they ever knew. I'm calling this exhibit The Dark Place. The FBC knows. Alice. Scratch was terrorizing her. Why? That's a pretty good um way to prove that you're not crazy, that you are um actually um seeing what you're seeing. Because that's what everybody asks in real life, right? Where's the evidence when you see it? unusual stuff? Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? Well, that's a pretty good way. Because it's obvious that Mr. Scratch doesn't actually care about being caught on film or not. He's just there tormenting her whenever he can. So that's a pretty good um, way, not just to keep her safe when she went to the FBC, but also to um, show people that, yes, there is something freaky going on and you can't deny it. It's not being faked. It's actually real and happening. not good and we got return damn I guess scratch out maneuvered him that sucks. The other side. Oh, we're finally going back to Saga. I'm wondering, is that really him or not? Okay, let's recap what you've told us so far, Ellen. For the past 13 years, you've been trapped in a nightmare dimension called the Dark Place. Yeah. It's like New York, but it's not New York. And can be reached from the bottom of Cauldron Lake, but it's not really under the lake. And after all this time, you've managed to get out. Yeah, yeah. But so has your evil doppelganger, Mr. Scratch. 
Or is it the dark presence? Both. It's interchangeable. He's Scratch when he looks like me, but he can change into this other form. And Scratch, the dark presence, wants to rewrite the world in his own image. Which would be in your image, as he looks just like you. And turn the world into a fucking nightmare. During Deerfest, which is scheduled to take place in a couple of days. You got out of the dark place by writing a novel, the pages we've been finding. But your double edited it into a horror story that's now changing reality, taking over people, yeah. making them crazy, bringing the dark place to Bright Falls. Yes, fiction coming in contact with the dark place can change reality. The story is coming true, soaking into everything, like, like, like darkness when, it, when night falls. But last time- it... This will be back in 2010. Yes, last time it didn't happen all at once. The story came true bit by bit as it unfolded. And that dark presence was still bound to the lake. I stopped it before it got the ending it wanted. Before it broke free. Based on that, there's still time. Which brings us to your magical light switch. The clicker. Magical doesn't quite cover it. Scratch wants it to bring about his ending. That, that can't happen. If I can get the clicker, I, I can send him back to the dark place, make all the shit go away. I don't think it's quite that easy. Look. Like, what's I that little thing going, going to do against him? I don't think it quite works like that. It's full of holes, and I, I'm not sure how much I can trust. It, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a half-forgotten dream. So DRF is going to turn into a slaughter, isn't it? Because I remember seeing a video from the control guy saying the horror of Deerfest. So I'm guessing things go pretty badly. Alan. That was the guy who did all the educational We've videos on control. That shit crazy in the past 24 hours. What I want to know is, why am I? Why are we written into the story? I think I saw you. Or a vision of you in the dark place. I think you helped me reach out and escape somehow. With that in the story, Scratch would have edited it to get to you. To hurt you. We are all in danger. That's a nice beard. Look at that. That man's not real. And there's so much of it. Seriously, what are you, man? Are you a creation or some some random guy warped into Alex Casey? What the fuck are you, man? The man's not real. So I'm guessing we got a ton of sh um, a shit ton of uh, stuff to go through in profiling and the case board. And the manuscript pages and all this shit. We got a ton of stuff to go through. Um, it should auto save, right? Like this. Let's see. Return the heart. Quick save. Yeah, save four minutes ago. So okay, so we can totally skip that. We just skip the cinematic next time. That's exactly what we want. Uh, since we can't manually save so far. Oh wait a second. Can we save in the? I think we can save here, right? In the board. What do we save? The radio, television, manuscript pages. Um. Yeah, how do we save? I forgot how we save when we're in when we're Saga, not Alan. Let's see. Profiling, writer's room, the mind place, here we go. Yeah, so it is the mind place where we save, right? I don't mind skipping the four minutes of cinematics. I just wanted to see if we could do a manual save here.
manuscript pages. It's not the TV. We haven't gotten any new VHS tapes. It's not the it's not the TV with the commercials. It's not the map. That was the profiling. But I guess not. What's in here? Nope, we can't go in there. You know what? We're just gonna leave it right here. We're only four minutes away. We can just uh Skip over the cinematic next time. Because it is two hours. It is over two hours at this point, And it is uh, 4.43 a.m. So I am tired. And yeah, we get, we went way further than, than I expected to. Um, it didn't help that, like I said, the recording kind of got um, screwed up the first couple of times. I had to go back and keep reloading the game. Because um, the video wasn't coming out quite right on the Elgato capture software. So I had to fix that. And then... um. We got lost in that freaking subway tunnel. We didn't know where to go, which path to take. So, um, yeah, that took a while. Probably should have saved in one of the break rooms, but I really wanted to see the end of uh, Alan's chapter right there. I wanted to see what happened. And then I thought that we were going to start another long chapter with the with the tower where he lived, but no, it was just like that. It was just that bit of story with Alice and Mr. Scratch, and that was it. So it, there wasn't even a break room there for us to save. So we're just going to pick up with Saga next time. Um, it's getting really interesting. I'm still not 100% convinced that is Alan Wake, because we know he can shapeshift Scratch. So how do we know that's not him, even though he's trying to warn them? Or what he's trying to do but at the same time what if it's like a what if it's like a one of those uh, what do you call it like Zanato's gambits or something like that where he's just um what if that is scratch he's just pretending to be wake so he can manipulate them into doing exactly what he wants there's no way to tell right because if he can change into him and he can adjust his behavior there's no way to tell which is which so that could that might not be Alan Wake at all as much as it sounds like him or Scratch could have done something to them before he sent him back out, which is why he doesn't remember anything. Because he said there's holes in his memories, but if he just escaped, why would he be having the memory problems? How do we know Scratch didn't implant something in him or uh, mess around with his mind? Like he could be using him as a Trojan horse to manipulate Saga and Casey, so we don't know. But either way, we got quite a glimpse of what's been happening over the past 10 years or so. That was really smart um, and creative of Alice to turn that whole experience into, into like an art exhibit. But at the same time, I get the feeling that's exactly what Scratch wants. To give him more influence in the real world. Or the physical world. That, that may be exactly what he wants. For her to kind of spread the image of him around. Because we saw in Control, like that's one of the main aspects of Control. Like the more the board's image here is imagery is everywhere the more power they have so it could work the same for scratch too the more people see him and know him and the more influence he might exert on the actual physical world so it might be the reverse you know even though she's doing it for her own peace of mind it might be serving his purposes because the more people that are aware of him the stronger his power grows just like the board and control you know the more people they can hook under their fingers the more powerful they are same thing here he may he might want to just spend time tormenting alice just for the fun of it but at the same time the more people who are aware of him the greater his influence over the world and the more it grows so i'm really curious to see where that goes but um it's gonna have to wait until next week because like i said um tomorrow i gotta go back to the resident evil 3 remake nightmare playthrough which is oh boy there's a nightmare right there that, that's a very dark place you don't want to go to the freaking nightmare mode I've already died three times and I was using the, um, the strength and defense coins and uh, the uh, thing for extra ammo and uh, 
flaming knife that they gave you and with all that stuff I still got killed three times within the span of an hour or so that shows you right there how brutal it is um, I'm not gonna go to inferno mode because that's just insane but that shows you right there how brutal nightmare mode is you can unless you're just cheesing it with like the infinite ammo weapons you can just go in there with every defense coin every extra item every single advantage and still get your ass kicked that's the way um, nightmare mode works and after we do that we're gonna play some ape escape because that's it's been a long time since i played that game it's pretty fun everyone loves that ape escape it's one of those games that seems to be universally beloved which is a shame that sony has not made any more of them and apparently they just disbanded the team last month so that sucks but we're gonna play that so we'll probably get back to con i was gonna say to control we'll go probably get back to alan wake 2 around like monday or tuesday at the earliest but won't be too long of a, of a wait i just want to do those two games in particular and then also maybe squeeze in a session of re4 remake or robocop when we can because um i also need to get back to those games too but um hope you're enjoying the playthrough i know it went a little slow there a little quiet for a while because i was just completely lost in that sewer section it was just or a subway section i was just trying to figure out where to go and what to do next so yeah i kind of went a little bit quiet there um hopefully it'll pick up next time now that we actually know we're starting to get a idea of what we're supposed to do so hopefully um there'll be much more to talk about next time and also sagas sagas uh, sections aren't as vague as alan's they've actually been pretty straightforward so far like that was a that was the first real time i've been really lost in the game and I mean really lost as in I didn't even have an idea where to go it definitely reminds you of the old style type of games that used to be made you know before gaming became mainstream and now a lot of people want easy games in every single genre you know they want they want a game to hold your hand they want games to always have an easy difficulty and lots of hints plenty and plenty of hints on where to go and that's not always what game de developers want to do sometimes sometimes they just want you to think and use your brain on on where to go and figure it out the old-fashioned way by trial and error and that seems to be what remedy is doing here because we got r little to no hints during that section of where we were, we were supposed to go it just said like oh follow the cult or um, complete the ritual etc but it didn't really give you specific directions of where to go which um I kind of like because you know they're they're trying to get you to think but at the same time it does mean that we kind of got lost there for like 45 minutes but we got through it though we got through it and we got to see some pretty cool stuff as a reward so um we'll pick it up next week thank you for watching and i will see you again next time on alan wake 2 on the ps5 see you later